But to have a mentality like that, especially since your previous record yield did quite well and yeah. was well received, I can imagine that you, that maybe people around you might say, "Oh, is this the right way?" Or yeah, I mean, I think honestly, they, I tried to make hard love before the same way I did heal, and it was right. actually it didn't work because okay. it's not the same record as heal. Sure. And if I ever make the same record twice, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. And, and what's so great about people that I work with is the only criticism that they have is when I'm not seeking my own truth. Mm. If I'm, and I, it's almost like, I don't know if you've ever had this in your life, like your friends, your family, they know what's coming next for you maybe more than you can see because mm. you're in it. And it was just like everybody knew it was time for me to just open up the doors, yeah. like open up the windows in the house and let the fresh air in and like let correct collaboration happen and, 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 and enjoy working with other people. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes the music more interesting when it's not just me, you know, I don't want to play the guitar solos all right. the time. And especially if I have my friend Jason who can play guitar so much better than I, like, you know, it's just, it's so like, uh, Every day was a surprise and like a just a beautiful uh, experience, you know. Because it's not just about recording the guitars, it's about getting coffee in the morning and it's sure. about like, you know, all of those great things that happen and the jokes you tell and mm. like, yeah, it's the best. Is, is there maybe one uh, track that sticks out there for you of the recording? Yeah, I mean, as far as like the loose mentality, I, I, I think the song Everything, okay. uh, track three, because, like, again, there's rules when we're making records where people mm. will swear by things. But, like, we just had the drums in the live room. I had my amp, like, right next to the drum set, what you're never supposed to do. And then we had Nico, or Nicholas on the tambourine playing, and we just had one mic. Good. Kind of like, we mic'd the drums, but we didn't even mic the amp or the tambourine. It's just all, like, the main, not the main, main riff, but, like, the rhythm riff is just me in the room. Because it's like we're never going to feel this song to the full, like, we're never going to, like, move to this song better, any better if we, like, do it separately. Like, let's right, just, sure. like, sweat together and, like, move together and, like, no click track and anything, you know, it was just, like, but that song felt like it because, like, you know, the way that our faces, you know, like, the smile, yeah, it was just, it was very fun for me and... I wrote one line uh, uh, down from everything. Um, I'm on everything you can give me, and life is in inadequate. So, and, and you mentioned the, these lyrics that kind of would pop up from your subconscious. Yeah, so, so when that's you, definitely one. So, so when you look back at these lyrics, then what, is your, what, your, what are your thoughts on it when you kind of look back at them later? Well, I think that's what's really interesting about like the, uh, um, the amount of <clears throat> The amount of contemplation and planning and creation that went into Heal, mm -hmm. I knew what all the songs exactly were about. Mm -hmm. And they weren't really a mystery to me. But what I love about Hard, Hard Love, the album, is I'm still figuring out what the songs are about. Okay. And it's really interesting as, because I, I mean, and I love it. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't. And it will be a mystery that I figure out eventually, and they're starting to kind of come together to me. But like, you know, they're, they probably mean something that I will learn eventually, or right. you know, or I was just thinking about, and it just came across in that way. And I think that's the beauty of writing lyrics: how lyrics can just fluctuate, mm. you know, and words are, you know, where it was necessary maybe to live in a very literal black and white world with the last record, it's nice to go back into mm. like, you know, just kind of effervescent in the sky, you sure. know, where, where do you pull them from? And but, but for instance, with the, with the uh, final track then, that was obviously a track uh, written about or for your brother. Yeah. So a song like that, did you write it um, with a certain intent in a way? That song is very, that's, yeah, that song was like, yeah, I mean, it, the title is, it's like the one song that's not about indulgence. Mm. But I purposely titled it that because, like, 
It was just, it was very, I, I don't want to go into no, explaining it, but like, it was the most, it was the worst thing that ever could happen. And in a way it was psychedelic because mm. like, I never thought such intense darkness right. could turn into psychedelic. And it was darker than anything I would see or have seen on acid, <laughs> you know, and it was like, and it, and it wasn't, and he's better, my little brother got better, but like, it was like a, it was like an acid trip you can't escape from. Mm. And it just was worse and worse. And so that song is definitely, that song has meaning. Like that's, it's purpose that it, it's on purpose that it's the last track. Like, uh, fair enough. And like the track listing is very, the one thing I was intentional, although I wasn't like overly precious about the lyrics, I was very intentional about the track okay. uh, order for it. What is side A? What is side B? Where do you flip the vinyl? Well, <laughs> and in, in what way? Because, before, uh, for instance, Cry is it, more of a piano. But so, so, in that's, what way did that's, you? That's yeah. That's well. The split point is on the hill, mm. and then I'm a vinyl guy, so I always picture flipping the vinyl, and then Cry comes on. So you go from the most, you know, whatever hedonistic, you know, mm. just spirit quest song. And then you just hit right with the emotional weight of like kind of the consequences of, right. you know, it's a hangover almost. Mm. So like you have the best night of your life and then you wake up to the sun and you're like, oh my God. And it was kind of like a symbolic, physical, spiritual, personal hangover right. of like, I've hurt people, hurt people that are the closest people to me and now I have to face it. Because you can avoid facing it forever, but I just, I did face it. And then mm -hmm. you have to, and that song, the song Cry is like the answer, I think back. But a song like Cry then, is, is this more a reflection on, on past behavior or is, is this something that happened in between albums? In between albums, okay. I lived pretty hard and it was kind of wild. Well, did it have to do with, with the success of Heal then? No, I think, I think it was going to come to me if I was in like an insurance salesman. Okay. I think okay. I was pretty, uh, my brain was in quite an irrational place mm -hmm. and quite a um, manic, not very settled. Okay. And it was more of me just so fearing being content because mm. like I always have this, this like, fear that if things get good, they're going to get real bad again. Like, mm. I don't know why. It's, it's probably because my generations of my families were farmers. I think, I swear this is it. Like, they were all farmers, and if there was a frost early, they would lose their crop. Mm. So it's like, it's this inherited sense of dread that, like, even if you are safe, it just could all go wrong. You know, my dad sometimes says the tire could pop at any moment, and it's like, I... I, I, yeah, I always have that feeling, and I think that's what drove just the manic wildness of traveling and, you know, what the heel tour was and my life at home and my mm -hmm. life on the road. And, and it was just, you know, there was, yeah, wow, <laughs> sorry. But, but, but then at the same time, there is a, uh, a certain confidence or, or that you want to make music and that you yeah. want to, so, so that, how does that balance itself? Well, I think it's, I, at the same time of like, I didn't want to like, I didn't want any of the, you know, with, when I made this record, I, again, back to the celebratory thing, you can mm -hmm. celebrate in sadness too. Sure. And I didn't want anything to be apologetic. Mm. I know that's weird, but like, I, uh. I, I didn't want, because also, you, man, you made such a good point about the lyrics, I'm going back to it now. <laughs> but when you said, you know, when we're talking about how if I'm figuring out what the lyrics are about. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I have discovered through like listening to the record is there is a um, unstable narrative. There's an un, there's an un uh, trustworthy narrator. Mm -hmm. So you never know if, I don't know if it's me talking to someone right. or someone talking to me. So like with a song like Cry, I don't know if it's me talking right. to a person that I've hurt or a person talking to me who I've hurt. 
so it's kind of like you have this transitional narrative that is sure. is kind of like and it's not uh, third person and it's not like the omnipotent someone look it's not someone looking down mm. it is a personal conversation but I don't know who is right it's directed at and, and then in, in a way so then maybe you do you want to discover which way it is it's okay if I don't mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's it's kind of nice to be to live in that right. realm. Like even the first song, the title track, Hard Love, I don't know if that's, <laughs> I, I think it's me singing to my wife, but I don't know if it's her singing to me. Mm. It's someone singing to someone else that it's time to have some great sex. Like, it's just what that song's right. about. But you know, it's like, I don't know which one it's, who's singing to who, so. But in, with Hard Love then, uh, to kind of round off, it, it has become the title. So, so what made that track then, I think that's just who, it's, it's kind of growing a bit more aware of myself and understanding that it's just how I live. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. I live, I'm a big, talking, loud, hard living, hard loving guy. <laughs> and like, I think my mom once, or someone in my family said that I was like a hard loving guy. And it made, I was like, okay, well that's a good, wait. Chop that off, hard love. That <laughs> kind of makes sense, you know. And but when you d when you go into something all the way, you set yourself up for great joys and great failures. Right, sure. And I would I I cherish all the failures I've had because I also have set myself up some for wonderful things. And I think it's you got to go for it. Well, that's very right. And last question, then. but this this kind of this this is a form of idealism, then in a way, a positive. Yeah, I think I'm an idealistic guy, mm. to my own detriment. <laughs> I think it disappoints me sometimes, but I'm not going to change it. Like, mm. I think the the one thing that I'm very still to this point, and I think hard love and heal, and maybe all my records, mm. the one nice thing that I'm proud of is I've never gotten cynical mm. and I never want to get cynical in my music or my life like if I'm saying something I'm meaning something mm. whether it makes any sense at all but everything I'm doing is like it's not double talk sure. or like I'm not trying to trick anyone it's just you know that's it if I'm feeling this I'm gonna go for it and uh, yeah I mean it, if you're gonna miss you're gonna miss big <laughs> but if you miss big that means you could also Go for it, sure. you know, and really get something. So, I think that's a good ending. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. For Thank your time. you.